Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, I've got a little surprise for you today. I uh, have been planning to do this for a while since I um, self-published my third book, which is called Run for the Hell of It. Uh, 50 running adventures from 5k to 100 miles. So my third running book, um, and I went for self-publishing this time, which was a bit of an experiment. Um, now, I did this for several reasons. The first reason was the very simple one. Um, I'll be honest, I couldn't find a publisher that wanted to take a chance on it. I think because it didn't have as much of a hook, an obvious hook, as my first two books, um, Down Here From Here and Running the Orient. In the first book, I ran from John O'Groats Land's End. In the second one, it was talking about my journey from Paris to Istanbul um, in, in a self-converted camper van with my then partner. So those were quite big travel stories. This was a much sort of smaller scale book about um, having running adventures within the UK during a year of lockdown and during a year where I turned 50. So it was more of a personal book. It was um, a smaller scale book. I did have some very good feedback from a couple of publishers I sent it to, including one that she seemed very keen had she had uh, this particular publisher not had a, a couple of vaguely similar books in the pipeline. Um, she said she would have taken a chance on it, but I couldn't quite get anyone to um, commit and I gave up after about maybe 10 publishers. I mean, perhaps I could have kept going, tried some publishers who haven't yet gone for a running book that do do non-fiction. But I thought, you know what? I want to try the experiment of self-publishing in non-fiction because I think it really in non-fiction is where you can make a um, self-published book succeed. The reason for that is that um, it's just basically search engines. When people are Googling uh, or looking on Amazon for a book about a topic, they'll type something in like uh, running adventures or long distance running UK or something like that and various books will pop up. Um, that's on Amazon itself and also on things like Google. Um, whereas no one's going no one's going to Google new novelists. If I self-published a novel, how would people find it? They couldn't really find it by Googling unless they Google my name. Or it happens to be about a very specific topic, the novel. You know, if I was writing a novel like The Old Man in the Sea, about uh, an old man trying to land a giant fish, like Hemingway did. Um, yes, somebody Googles novel fishing old man, they're probably going to get that book. But um, other than those few examples where it's a very, very concrete and unusual topic, um, a first time novelist is very unlikely uh, that their book's going to be found through search engines alone. They're going to have to do a lot of marketing. So we'll talk about marketing later. But for now, I just want to talk about how I did this using Amazon KDP. I'm going to talk you through the process uh, pretty much from start to finish um, of doing this. Um, and I'm going to screen record on my little laptop so you can see exactly what I'm up to. But I should say, I didn't go into this absolutely as a virgin self-publisher. I had already published this. Uh, does another sneaky little plug here for uh, Running Coyote and Fallen Star, which is a collection of short stories. Now, I know, I just said nobody's going to find fiction, or novels certainly, um, if they don't already know you write fiction, but um, I'd already published 18 of these stories in literary magazines, and so I thought there was no harm in having a little compendium for my own purposes more than anything else of my short stories. Just did it for fun and, for, and also to get the experience of having self-published. So I, I did this book. Um, it's about 300 pages long, um, paperback. I did manage to get some critiques. I wrote to some of the editors um, of my short stories, uh, of the magazines that published my short stories to get them to say something nice about them, uh, which they did. It was very kind. Um, and anyway, so that got published. I published that, I think, in 2020. Um, I think it was. Ah, I could look up the um, publishing details in my book. Um, 2021, published that. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put this book out myself. And then I'm going to, because with a small publisher, as I've said in the second um, How to Write a Memoir video, which is also on this channel, you're pretty much going to have to do a lot of your own marketing if you self-publish a book. So you might as well 
you know, rather than go for a very small publisher with a tiny marketing budget, it might be worth, in certain circumstances, self-publishing and then doing your own marketing anyway, which is what I'm doing, basically. So the book came out a day ago. I've sold quite a few copies. Not, you know, we're not talking thousands or hundreds, but I've sold a few copies. I'll be hopefully selling more as the uh, months go on. Um, I've been on the fringes of the top one. No, I've been in the top 100 running books, very briefly. Dashed in, fell out again. Um, so it, it is possible to be a category bestseller um, as a self-published author with relative ease, if you're cunning. Anyway, uh, let's get into the nitty-gritty of how I made this physical object exist. Um, so, I have a cup of tea here, very important writer's tool, which I will consume throughout this chat. Yorkshire tea. They can sponsor me if they want. It's delicious. Yes, so here is um, Kindle Direct Publishing homepage. Once you set up your account with them, I should point out there are other platforms, obviously. There's Ingram Spark. Um, there might, I think there's a couple of other ones. This is the one I use simply because it's Amazon's, you know, they are the biggest seller of pretty much anything in the world, as much as one might prefer it weren't the case or prefer there were other ways to sell large volumes online. You know, I like it. It's good. It's a very it's a very good system. It's relatively easy to use. Anyway, this is the home page. There are four tabs, bookshelf, reports, community marketing, as they as it may seem fairly obvious. Um, most of your stuff is going to be on bookshelf. That that's where your books are listed. So there's my sleepy pad. That's my two books, Running for the, Run for the Hell of It and Running Coyote and Fallen Star. Um, this is the place where you basically do most of your sort of coordinated work on putting the book together, um, setting the prices, that sort of thing. So the first thing to look at, um, maybe on another one I'll go into these other things, reports, community and marketing. But on this one, so that the video doesn't end up four hours long, I'm just going to look at um, the gist of this part. Okay, so here's where you fill in the initial details of your book. Um, the language, primary language it's going to be in. Um, title. Uh, subtitle. This is quite important for uh, non-fiction books. Often the subtitle is where you can hide all your cunning little keywords that people will look for. So I've called it Run for the hell of it, quite a nice title. And just to clarify, subtitle, 50 running adventures from 5K to 100 miles. So hopefully someone typing 5K, 100 miles, running, adventures, all that sort of thing, my book title may, may or may not pop up. Um, if you're writing a series, um, you can add a series title, you know, book one of X, that kind of thing. Um, editions, yeah, if, you, if you're writing a sort of academic book or a non-fiction book that you later have to add chapters to or amend in some way you can you can add an edition number and this is where you put your writer's details just put my name in there um, there are no contributors to this book so I don't have to add additional authors and then a description this is the main marketing content of your book that will appear on Amazon's page so it's vital to get this bit right um, so I've I've said during the COVID-19 pandemic of of 2020 to 21, author and filmmaker Gavin Boyter turned 50 in lockdown. His relationship had broken up. He found himself between jobs and facing an uncertain future. Gavin decided to celebrate this milestone year by running 50 miles along the Union Canal, etc., etc. I won't go on. But I think it's basically the same. It should think of it as largely the same, and I think actually that bit is exactly the same as this blurb that goes on the back of your boot jacket. Um, and then what I did at the bottom, which is a, a good idea, if you haven't, because unless you can get advanced copies out and get friends or, you know, colleagues or someone you know to write reviews for Amazon, which is a good thing to do, but it's difficult because you're asking people to read a whole book effectively um, before it's even released. Unless you can do that, what I did was I used, I sent the early copies out to some noted writing runners like um, Adharan and Finn and Rachel and Cullen, who've all published bestsellers in the running books world. And um, I gave them advanced copies to read and they very kindly provided me with little blurbs. This is standard practice in nonfiction and fiction as well. 
and then I have put these little blurbs into uh, this description here as well as on the back of the book and a couple this is a handy hint make space on the design of your cover to have a couple a little bite size maybe even extracts from the other spiels but put a couple on the front some people even put them on the spine if the book's big enough um, yeah so there's that publishing rights I own the copyright um, the only way you would you wouldn't you have to take that or <laughs> say I wanted to release a, an edition of Sherlock Holmes just randomly do, release my own edition perhaps I'd done a set of illustrations for example um, I could do that because it's in the public domain so um, I, maybe not all of it but certainly some Conan Doyle's in the public domain now I could do that I could take that and I could release I could release an edition of Hamlet anything that's in the public domain um, now here uh, the keywords now I don't know exactly how useful these are maybe if there's anyone has experience of this sort of thing let me know in the comments but I've put running COVID-19 because that's part you know important for the setup of the book memoir marathon running ultra marathon trail running and British travel uh, in the hope that that will help people find my book and then, then you choose two categories. Now, this is also quite pretty important because Amazon categorizes books um, with a series of nested categories. So in my case, I've got nonfiction, health and fitness, exercise. That's one. And nonfiction, sports and recreation, running and jogging. I haven't actually chosen athletics for this. But Amazon may also assign its own categories. Um, I'm not quite sure how that happens, but these are the ones that I've chosen that will be on the listing so however many books are being sold in this category running and jogging my book will be measured against that and I'll, I'll get a number you know 71 200 number 239 etc I think the highest I've ever made it with a book was something like 12 or 13 um, and there's a little tick box. Does your book classify as any of these types? Low content book. All right, so this is if you're publishing uh, a book that's got a lot of blank pages, you know, or lined, if you write like prompts for a journal, that sort of thing. Um, that's because I think you get lower royalties if there's a smaller proportion of text, which makes sense because you're effectively publishing a kind of a notebook or a large print book. Um, I don't know whether you get more or less royalties or something for that. You know, there's, there's maybe the charges are different. I don't know. Um, adult content. I think it's yeah to do with where your where your book will be advertised. Um, it says, does this book contain language, situations, or images inappropriate for children under eighteen years of age? Now I've ticked yes, and I'm beginning to wonder if that's an error of judgment because. Um, yeah, there might be a swear word here and there, but apart from that, there's pretty much nothing else in there that's problematic. I might have to look into that because that might be affecting where my book is advertised. So I'll need to look into that. Um, anyway, so that's that's what you get under the first category of information, um, which is paperback details. Then we go into paperback content. This is where the key sort of physical matter of the book and the layout of the book is specified. So here we have print ISBN. Uh, this is important. You can get an ISBN number from Amazon. Tick that box. You have to pay extra for that, I think. Um, they'll assign one to you. And then imprint. So an imprint is sort of like a subset of a publisher. So if you are publishing your own book, you probably give yourself a name, a publisher name, and maybe even within that use. So I have an imprint because I'm technically published under my dad's publishing name because he published a book first and he bought a set of ISBN numbers. And um, so I'm using some ISBN numbers that he's already bought. So my book is coming under his um, publishing name, Gugnug Press. I know I don't know what that means and he hasn't told me yet. <laughs> and then the imprint is Sword Pen Press which is based on my logo for my content writing company. Uh, and you can see it on the cover, little logo there. So good thing to get. 
uh, to give your book a little bit more legitimacy, get a little logo designed and the name of your publishing company, put it there on the back. The um, When you've got an ISBN number, um, it means that a barcode can be generated from that. Uh, you can generate this yourself and put it onto the design or there is a cover designer here which will, or a way of uploading a pre-designed cover that will leave a space and, well, it will put a barcode into this part of the design. So you have to leave that bit blank. Anyway, I'll explain more when we get to that. So, publication date. That's a bit weird to be honest. It's kind of nominal because it could be the date that you complete all this information and then you just go live. Or it could be a date in the future, like you've planned because you want to do some marketing before you officially publish the book. So you could complete everything, submit it, but set the publishing date a month or two months in advance if you wish. Now here we get onto the crux of the matter, the print options. So you're choosing your paper type. Now I've had all sorts of experiments with, with this really. And I'll show you what the two basic types of paper look like. They don't look... I'm going to need to get another book for comparison. All right, I'll get my other book. So, this is a, this is a, my second book, Running the Orient. And it was published uh, by a small press using standard publishing techniques. The paper is kind of textured and cream-coloured, and it will darken over time, like pretty much all mass, mass market paperbacks. You can feel it sort of matte, you know, sort of pulpy in a way. You can tell by looking at the edge that it's been cut and it's quite, it's got a kind of rough feeling to it. But that's, you know, that's normal. The weird thing about self-publishing with Amazon KDP, which is direct print, um, is that your paper will end up, in a sense, too good. Okay, that might sound counterintuitive. How can something that's being published you know, one or two handful of books at a time, depending on how many people order them, how can it end up with the paper quality being too good? Well, the paper quality looks more like this. It's smoother, it's finer, it's usually slightly thicker. Um, it's often less transparent. Sometimes it doesn't hold the ink as well. That's the one downside. Um, there's two large, essentially two variants. There's the white paper, which looks like that. And then there's the cream paper, which looks like that. <laughs> As you can see that. So you can see the difference. The cream paper is slightly more, looks slightly more like a normal published book. So I, my preference, I think, from if I did this again in the future, I'll show you that side by side, if I can. Yeah, my preference would be to go for the cream paper. Um, you can choose whether you're going to have a color interior or a black and white interior. This, the only reason you'd have a color interior usually is if, I suppose if you have color headings, if you're doing a textbook, you might do that. Um, or if you're having photographs, color photographs, which I didn't do. And I, to be honest, I'm still confused about the color photographs issue because it doesn't seem to be an option to have color plates like you might find, you know, color plates being in my second book, this, you know, these kind of glossy, shiny photographic plates. I don't I currently think, I don't think Amazon has a, I've never found an option for that. If anyone knows differently, please let me know. So in this book, all I opted for was black and white photographs, which you can do, you can insert normally into your Word document or your PDF, um, and it'll just come out as it comes out, usually fairly decently, but not, you know, it's not excellent, but it's, it's, it's perfectly decent. Um, okay, so I've gone for black and white interior with cream paper. The next section, the important thing to, to decide, to realize is once you've published your book, this will remain forever. You'll have to do another edition of your book if you want to change the sizing. And certain sizes aren't carried by certain, um, American distributors of print books. So if you want, because Amazon is non-exclusive, you can actually publish your book 
and if you can persuade a distributor to carry copy physical copies that's fine by Amazon um, I'm pretty sure I'm sure I read that um, you'll have to buy them from Amazon that's probably why they don't mind <laughs> um, in order to then sell them on paper yes uh, and sizing sizing the next big issue sizing all of these things will be fixed once you've submitted finally submitted your book for approval by Amazon so there are so many trim sizes so many different sizes that you could potentially have um, it's been published so I can't change it but honestly there's about 50 different sizes what I would literally advise you to do is find a book find a book that you own or a book in a bookshop that you want your book to be the same size as and then get one of these <laughs> literally get a ruler and measure you know the length and the width write it down in millimeters it's far more accurate than inches and you know fractions of an inch is hard to calculate so write it down in millimeters and then find the nearest size that you can ow oh turn my finger in the door in the drawer so I've gone for 12.85 by 19.84 centimeters. So 1,285 millimeters by 1,984 millimeters, um, which is 5.06 by 7.81 inches. You have to get this right. This is a bit, it's, it's fiddly. And the other complication is gonna be how, how, how wide is your spine gonna be? Well, there's a way to calculate that and I, I believe that Amazon does allow for that. It has a system, a little gadget later on, where you can calculate how big your spine will be based on the number of pages you have. Um, bleed settings. Um, bleed, set, bleed is basically, I'm using the wrong thing, too many computers. Bleed is basically whether the image on your book will spill over, the image on the cover of your book will spill over um, and pretty much you should always say yes because what you want is you don't want there to be a white line or space where the because you miscalculated the size of the cover image it just has blank card like that so you always have to allow a little bleed so you see it, basically what it means is whatever size your cover is it will just inch it in by like a fraction of a millimeter a little bit just to make sure the ink goes all the way to the end when they <laughs> take massive industrial um, guillotines and cut down the edge of your book probably because I selected bleed and we got the cover slightly wrong on the first printing that's why this bit 50 running adventures from this early edition which I've now changed um, that's why that runs too close to the edge so we have, I've changed that now so all future editions of the book that won't happen you can change the cover you can change the cover PDF even once you've published the book which is good um, paperback cover finish there's matte and there's glossy I've always gone for matte which is basically because it looks like again because it looks like normal books in bookstores most books most books these days have a matte cover they're not this actually it is slightly less shiny because that's a you know professionally pub I don't want to say professionally published because Amazon is professional but traditionally published books do have a slightly mm, glossier veneer than what Amazon does currently. This may change. Um, and here is where you finally upload your manuscript. And to explain manuscripts, I'm going to have to show you something else. So I'm going to have to show you the template that you can download from Amazon. It's not the only way to do it. You can obviously make your own, complete your, completely make your own document from scratch. But I would advise, if you're learning the ropes, just download the template that Amazon KDP supplies and work with that now let me see if I can find it uh, uh, uh. where is it here 50 50 template that's the wrong kind is it that one no don't do that that's a PDF that's not what I want it must be this one
wait for it to download from from a um, what do you call it the cloud that's also a PDF why is that a PDF where is my word document that must be that one yeah oh come on they're all PDFs how can they all be PDFs That's a word document. Okay, so here is my any minute. So, oh, come on. Yeah, so here is my word document um, based on a template provided by Amazon. You get a cover. I don't know what that red thing is. That seems to have appeared. I'm sure that's not actually in the physical book. Um, maybe it's because I ran a spell check or something and it's put a mark in there to say what, quite what, I don't know. So you'll type the name of your book and it will appear in the center. It's nicely justified on both sides. You'll note there's more space on the left than the right. And that's because the front, the first page, what page one on a Word document will always be that first page which is on the right hand side so when you open a spread the odd pages one three five are always on the right this is important because you the last thing you want is to open the book and find everything's higgledy piggledy you know you've got a, the, the covers inside and no there is an order to it and the order is um, page one title page two, publishing information. This is a very good idea to follow, just find your favorite book, your favorite nonfiction book, if you're doing nonfiction, and pretty much include the same, in, the same aspect, the same things. What I've got is um, first published, so the date, you know, just the year, the name of the publisher, where it's published, UK, copyright. You get copyright on whatever you, in Britain, whatever you write, the day you write it, but Assert, asserting copyright in the year of publication is a good idea. And then there's a little statement. Um, the moral right of Gavin Boyd to be recognised as the author of this work has been asserted in accordance with the Copyright Design and Patent Act of 1998. This is just, again, boilerplate stuff. All, right, all rights reserved, you know. So if anyone wants to make a movie of this, they'll have to contact me. Um, no part of this publication may, may be reproduced. You know, basically the, the sort of standard disclaimer spiel you'll get in a book, in a non-fiction book. Um, if any sections of your book have been published elsewhere first, you're probably required to say so, and it's good form to do so even if you aren't. So I I published um, a chapter in a magazine called Like the Wind, this, this magazine. I'll give it a little plug. Like the Wind magazine. It's really excellent, glossy, beautiful, but oh, open to mine, strangely enough. So I published a chapter, an early chapter called Bright Water uh, in this um, fantastic running magazine. It's really, really recommended. Um, a labor of love, really. Uh, so anyway, so I, I previously published a sec I published a section of my book in there. So I've credited that here, chapter 40. It was previously published in uh, altered form in issue 32 of Light the Wind magazine, edited by Simon Freeman. Uh, cover design by Ian Boiter. Oh, that sounds like your name. Yes, my father designed the cover um, for this book. And uh, this is non-compulsory, but it's a nice thing to do. Um, people who are really into typefaces and fonts will appreciate it. So I've put it set in Garamond, which is the body text and the footnotes, and Corbel light for the headers with Calibri page headers. Uh, and then the ISBN number there, and I put my website just so that people can quickly find other stuff about me. That's page two. Page three tends to be a dedication, if you have one. Um, so I've put for runners everywhere. It's just a nice thing to do. And then on the reverse of that, usually blank. Um, then you'll have your contents. Uh, and 
as you can see, my content has run to two pages. Let's, uh, yeah, there you go. There they are. This took me a while to get right because oh, the formatting of a table added in Word where you want a break to appear in a particular place is somewhat of a challenge. So much so that I don't really want to go into it because I'm not even sure I'll be able to explain what I did. But with a bit of fighting, you'll get it to um, even up so that it matches on the top. The thing is, mine goes over a page, so it really doesn't matter that much that it doesn't perfectly align the top of there, doesn't align with the top of that. The bottom aligns, I think. It depends how finicky you are. But make it run over so that you can't see both sides at once. And then page five, is that page five? One. I should say these page numbers I'm assigning are the page numbers that Amazon will consider when they decide the width of your book spine and how many pages to list in the uh, little summary they put on their content pages. The page numbers that you assign are not really that relevant. They're useful in terms of your contents, obviously. People want to be able to find the right chapter. So you, put, you still want to put page numbers at the bottom of the page. But for Amazon's purposes, the only page numbers that matter are um, the absolute page number. So page one, page three, page five, Acknowledgements, page seven. This is, as, as you'll probably know if you've ever, ever read a book, uh, this is where the author thanks anyone who's helped um, in the creation of it, like the, like the credits to a movie. And then I've had the next page blank. I like everything to start on the right. It doesn't have to, but it's just a thing that I wanted to do. This involved a certain amount of fighting, it has to be said, because in order to make things to... Amazon likes to, if you have too many blank pages, Amazon will start getting a little bit finicky because it might start, its algorithm might start thinking you're trying to publish um, what it calls a notebook on the, on, the, on the sly. So don't have too many blank pages, certainly not in a row. Um, at the back of the book, it may add a few blank pages because that's just something to do with how it's print, how it's bound. Um, but don't add extra ones yourself. Now, so my book starts properly Section one, the introduction. Some people have an introduction which isn't included in the, their nominal page count. That's, it's quite hard to do. You can start a page count anywhere you like from any number you like on Word. Um, you may have to Google some of these things because I did them, but I had to fight to figure these things out. What I would say is don't, don't do returns to get onto the next page. Always use a section break um, or a page break. The difference between section breaks and page breaks are section breaks allow you to do things like um, have different headers on the left and right hand pages um, or to choose not to have a header on one page but to start it again on the next page. That kind of, you know, sort of bespoke page design. You really want section headers. Um, if you want to have a numbering system like the old Roman numeral numbering system where Prefatory material, pre prefatory is that word? Prefaces and things like that are Roman numerals. In, uh, introductions are Roman numerals sometimes. One to one IV or you know X V I whatever, and then the page count starts properly from one with the main subject matter. You can do that. It's a little bit tricky. You'll need a section break to do that. So my book starts at page one and the introduction and then every other page so every odd numbered page has a header with a chapter heading this is a thing again you need you'll need um, section breaks to do that section breaks between every chapter um, to then change the header so that it doesn't do a global change on your whole book the um, left hand side is the name of the book. This is quite standard. There are different different thoughts on this. Some some books have just chapter headings left and right. Some don't have them at all. It's entirely up to you what you do. Um, the template will adjust the justification left and right, and you'll see that the pages, um, the even pages, which are always on the left, have 
much wider. Let me get this right. This is going to be confusing unless I unless I explain this properly. Right. How can I do that? Right. So let's look at. Yeah. Right, so the introduction. So that introduction, even though it's on the left of the screen here, in my book, it's on the right. That's only because I've got two pages displayed and. There isn't a way of adding a blank page in Word that isn't going to be a real blank page. You might want to do that while you're laying out the book and then remove it before you publish it. That might be easier to get your head around. But in reality, um, introduct this is going to be on the right hand side in my book, which means that the inside section where it goes into the spine has to have extra space. So that's why there's extra space on that margin. Similarly, the opposite pages will have extra space on the other side because that's going into the spine, if that makes sense. And these are on the outside. Um, okay, so the numbering, could, uh, footnotes. Footnotes are fun. I like footnotes. Word is great at footnotes. You just you just do a right click. Um, you just do references, and then um, insert a footnote. And it will add. It will usually default to putting them at the bottom. You can put them at the end. That's end note. You can put the end of sections with. I don't know how, but there is probably a way to do that. Um, I prefer to put them at the bottom of the page because I don't think people should be flipping back and forth through the book all the time trying to find a footnote. They have the choice of reading it or not. I just think it's nice. It does it? Things that basically are little, little fiddly details that wouldn't, that would, disrupt the flow of the narrative if you were to put them in the book. I will add them there. Um, and then at the end of the chapter, I was able to include a photograph. Now, you'll note I put it on the next page because it's really, there's not really there's enough space left there to do that properly. Um, so I put it on the next page. That's okay because, because I want all my chapters to start on the right hand side. The benefit of that is it does give you the possibility of having a nice big photo on a blank page opposite. Although this is not the photo that accompanies this chapter. That's the only downside. Um, perhaps it would be better if I started my pages, start my chapters on the, on the left so that that couldn't happen. But for me, it's more standard practice to open a book and expect a chapter to be on the right hand side. Um, none of this applies if you're in the countries like China or Japan, I believe, where they start at the back and read up the page backwards. All sorts of other interesting things will apply in those countries, but um, in the Anglosphere and the Western world and Europe, pretty much everyone reads left to right. Yes, so that's I think that's about all I have to say about that. Um, it's a very long document. You can perform spell checks, grammar checks on Word, another advantage of using Word. Um, you can add words to your dictionary if you want them to stop, you know, querying your surname or other people's surnames and things like that. Um, it took me a while to, as I say, to get the pagination correct and everything else. Um, and then at the end, what I've done is I've added, um, usually it's good to put uh, an about the author page, especially if you have other books, because you want your list, you want to list them there that anyone who enjoyed this might be tempted to buy one of your other books. So I've, again, I've put that on the even number page on, so the odd number page on the right. And then Amazon's added a blank page. Don't know why, just has. And Amazon has added printed in Great Britain by Amazon and the barcode again. Um, is it the same barcode? Oh no, that's a different code. Hmm. That must be their like product code or something. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but it's not um, the same. It's not an ISBN, that's some other code they've added. Um, so there it is. Now, let's go back to Amazon. You upload this. Ah, first you must turn it into a PDF. Um, you can do it as a, no, you can do it as a doc, but I would, I would advise changing it to a PDF. The reason being that that will, Word documents when they're viewed on different systems can do strange formatting things sometimes. If you want the document to be absolutely exactly the same as you have set out, you've typeset, uh, particularly because it takes a long time and is a fiddly process, turn it to a PDF. Um, you can, I would do that, you can actually do that on Adobe's, Adobe Online now allow, um, 
the creation of PDFs for free and the downloading of them, one-offs. I think you can probably just do one a day or something, but you can do that. I would advise you to use Adobe because they are the creators of the PDF format. So that's, that's uploaded. Um, Amazon will actually do perform its own little spell check, I think, and tell you of any potential issues, which is quite good. The book cover, you have a choice of using a cover creator uh, where you can upload your own cover or use stock images. I wouldn't use stock images. Design your own cover. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if this works. I've never used it. I would prefer to just upload a design so that, again, I know that this exact design is going to be exactly what's on the book. You'll need to do this as a PDF. Um, don't use registration marks or old school print, you know, uh, registration marks. Don't use any of that. Just a PDF bleeds right to the edge of the page and it will do the rest. It has to be exactly the same number of um, millimeters as your specified cover size that you did on the first section, um, if you remember that. Uh, leaves, you'll have to leave. It's a bit fiddly. Um, you can put a barcode on yourself. That might be the sensible option. What I've done is I've actually um, just let Amazon generate a barcode, which is why it's done this strange thing with this Q code, which I've tried and it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> I don't know what I was supposed to be for. But anyway, um, Amazon added that. It looks nice. It looks fancy. Don't know what it half of it does. Um, but there was a trial and error to get the design to work because you know you need to you need to figure out how much space to leave so that it won't run over anything um, okay aspects of the cover that are important Ugh. put your name big i made that mistake on my short story collection i was very shy with my name it's too small um, if you look at the most well published books uh, well published most successful books the author's name is usually fairly large um, weirdly enough, the less famous, the, the more famous an author gets, the smaller their name can be. But in crime or something, the name the name is a brand and it is splashed everywhere. So if you want your name to become a brand, if you want to be the next Bill Bryson in travel, put, start putting your name big on the cover. The title is actually slightly less important. This one's a bit odd because I've got the main title in this interesting handwritten font and then the subtitle there. You don't, they don't need to be together. In fact, one book I recently read. Um, have I got, where is it? Oh, it's not here. Anyway, um, there's one book that has almost two subtitles. Um, but I would advise, yeah, one subtitle. You don't need to put the subtitle on the spine. So the spine has just the main name of the book and my, my name and the publishing company logo, not the name. You don't have to put the name on the spine. I've also included two short versions of the little critiques that fellow writing runners or running writers have given me. That's a nice tip, because if that ever goes into a bookshop or it's sitting down on some shelves, people will see that, oh, these people whose work I or have already read enjoyed this book, so maybe I will. On the back, I've put the spiel um, that was on the Amazon listing, and I've also, again, put the full version of those little critiques. Important, you know, important marketing. And my dad's incorporated some nice photo color photographs here um, which is good because, I, as I say, I couldn't really put them in the book. Um, website, again, and logo and the name of the company. So that's really it. That's all you need on the cover. Um, let's see if this other book has anything else. That's So this is a book that's published by my second publisher, uh, Great Northern Books. No, it's pretty much the same. Um, same deal. I followed that, basically. I followed exactly what you should follow the formatting of um, a book that's been published that you like so once you've done all that you can launch the previewer which I won't do because it takes a while to come up but it will basically show you exactly what your book will look like um, you can flip through it from including the cover all the way through all the way back check you must do this several times check every time you make a change no matter how small do the print launch previewer so you can check that it hasn't knocked anything else out of kilter. Once I made some formatting changes, 
I added a couple of photographs. It looked fine on the Word document. When I uploaded it, I did a preview and the, the uh, photos had slipped around in a weird sort of way. So I had to uh, rejig that. Um, I think it was again to do with section breaks, something like that. I tried to use the shortcut. Shortcuts are not good <laughs> if you want your publishing to go smoothly. Once you're happy with that, you will then move on to um, the next section, which is setting the prices of your book, which is quite exciting, quite fun. Um, here it's just giving you a summary of what you've decided so far. So it's saying ink and paper type, bleed settings, paperback cover finish, trim size, and the page count. Um, as I say, the page count is, look at your Word document, see how many pages that Word document and the PDF has. That's your Word count. That's your page count, not, not which is the highest number that you've assigned to a page. Um, I can't remember where the count, there is a calculator somewhere that shows you how wide the spine is. I think just, you just have to Google it, but there, I think there are ones that are, other people have produced as well. Um, the reason to do that is that your designer, whoever designed your cover will need to know that um, because there is no, although there's a standard height for your book, there's no standard width because when you think about it, this is standard, this is standard, but this isn't. So the length, if I were to pull the cover off this, which I won't do because that'd be cruel, and compare it to this, and, and compare it to this, there would all be different um, lengths. Anyway, so if you're happy with that, and you move to your third and final section, the paperback, paperback rights and pricing. Um, this is very, going to be a very long video, but hopefully it's useful. You're assigning the rights um, now, it may be that you're publishing, self-publishing a book that has been published by a professional publisher, but they haven't sold all the rights in different ter territories. This is something I might need to check, actually. It might be that one of my other books hasn't, they haven't sold the rights to publish in America. But they may reserve those rights for some point in the future. But it might be that you can do a deal with one of your publishers and you can say, well, have you sold the rights in Eastern Europe, um, Benelux countries, that's the territory. And they may say, no, we're not really, we're probably not gonna focus on that. And you might say, well, is there any chance you might let me do that? And they may agree or not. You can specify which territories you want Amazon to sell your book in. Um, or in this case, there's no one else involved. So I just ticked all territories, worldwide rights. My primary marketplace, which is uh, where the most of your sales will probably happen is in the UK, unsurprisingly. So Amazon.co.uk. You'll see a big drop-down list with all these different ones uh, for different air, different countries. Um, and then this is the key bit. This is where you decide how much you're going to charge for your book. There's a thing called expanded distribution. Um, this is what I was saying. This is um, Amazon potentially making physical copies of your book and sending it to distributors uh, around the world. There are only certain cover sizes, like because of uniformity on shelves, there are only several sizes that American books will accept and it's not annoyingly what we call B format, which is this sort of quality, fairly standard um, mid-range size. It's something slightly taller and thinner, I think. Have I got one of those? I think this is one. Um, that one. Yeah, this is an American book. If you want to do this expanded um, distribution, you'll probably have to choose this format, which as you can see is just fractionally higher and actually it's slightly wider. So yeah, it's slightly bigger than, uh, that's not the one, the, 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 all my books are the same size, but basically, yeah, it's just annoyingly slightly larger. So yeah, I decided not to bother, I, I don't know, I could have made that decision, but maybe if I do another edition, I could, you could do another edition, that's one thing you could do. You could basically take pretty much all the same details, um, change the cover size, change the interior, size and then publish it as a separate it would be effectively a separate book a separate edition of the same book no 
Would it be the same edition? No, I think it would have to be a separate book with a separate ISBN. So I'm not going to do that. Um, what I could do, because Amazon doesn't have an exclusivity for physical distribution, is I could go on Ingram Spark, which is a whole other thing that I might make a video about, but I haven't completed that process, which would allow me to upload my book and make it available to physical book distributors, including in America, regardless of the size. They don't seem to be as fussy um, as Amazon on what size it is. So this is where you put your prices. It's arbitrary. They will have a minimum which they will indicate and that minimum is the cost of them printing your book or the cost that they're telling us that it costs. Uh, you can't go below that. You can go as high as you like. Obviously it's up to you whether you think you're going to make money selling your book. I've put mine at 11 It's a little bit high compared to mass, some mass market but on the other hand it's very low compared to some non-fiction and certainly very low compared to academic. So I reckon that's about right. And it hasn't affected my sales, I don't think, so far. I'm getting £2.48 for each book. That's pretty good. That's That could be up to four or five times what you'd get um, from a traditional publisher. Obviously, they're not then giving you... You're not getting an advance. That's the big the big thing with this. You're not getting... Nobody's giving me, you know, a few thousand pounds to have the rights to publish my book. Um, but I will say, because my dad's a designer... It's cost me nothing to design and make happen and publish. Nothing, nothing, not a penny, zero. Not entirely true because I'm not factoring in my time, obviously, and my work. Um, if I did that, then who knows what it would cost. Um, if I got someone else to, if you get someone else to typeset your book, you get someone else to cover the, to do the design, yes, you could spend a few thousand. I did it all myself, um, or my dad. So this is different territories. Whatever you put in in your primary market, it will calculate roughly the equivalent in these other markets for you. And then what I've and then it will allow you to change them. So what I did is I just did the traditional thing of rounding everything up to it's like thirteen ninety nine. Um, that's euros. That's the same obviously for all of Europe. That's uh, in the euro. And then um, I've got Polish zlotys. I think it is. I've got um, Swedish kroner. Japanese yen, that's a lot, 1,866. Um, and of course, dollars in both Can Canadian dollars and American dollars and Australian dollars. Um, yeah, up to you, entirely up to you. You'll see, it will show you how much you're gonna earn. I don't know about this percentage, that's confusing. But the royalty rate is concrete. This is how much money you will get for every copy. Um, I don't have an expanded distribution. Actually, could I tick those boxes and if I did, what would happen? Nothing. It won't let me tick that because I've chosen the wrong cover size. There you go. Um, so once you're happy with that, you then hit, you can either hit save as draft if you want to think about it, maybe make a few more changes to the contents or the cover. Like I was waiting for some of these critiques to come in for a while, so I'd done everything else and I was just waiting to finalize the cover, save it as draft. Only when you're finally, finally, finally ready do you hit publish your paperback book. Although, as I said, even once you've published it, because they're only printing as number of copies whenever someone orders one, it's not like they're printing boxes of them which sit in a warehouse. This allows you to literally change the contents of your book between you could sell the book, totally change the content and sell it to someone else. Which seems a little bit strange. Because if people are, if word of mouth and reviews online are saying, oh, it's a wonderful book, and then you go and change the contents. Well, how does that work? But that's, that, that's the uh, flexibility. So I have unsaved changes. I'm going to continue that saving because I don't want to change anything that I've already set. And that is it. Once you have hit go, your book is on Amazon and I will show you my book on Amazon and there it is first thing it comes up possibly because I've already googled it a few times just to make sure and I will show you what the listing looks like uh, I think I'll do a separate one on marketing because there are things you can do I haven't talked about ebooks I haven't talked about um, I haven't talked about uh, Kindle Unlimited. 
uh, I think Kindle Unlimited is available to people yeah, who've signed up for it, pay, they pay a certain subscription fee each month, and then if you select your book to be on Kindle Unlimited, they get it free effectively. But what happens then is that you get reimbursed from Amazon based on page read. And yes, they are tracking how many pages people are reading off your books, which is a little bit strange. But yes, they know how many pages are being read and you'll get paid like, I don't know, a cent every 10 pages or something crazy. Um, so yeah, here's the book. There's the title. I've got an author, once you've published several books, you can set up an author page where they'll show you, you can list all your books and people can find out more about you. Uh, it will always say in stock, or it should do, because as I say, it's print on demand, so even if only one person ordered it today, it will go into the next available print run. Um, it's always in, you know, it's always possible for them to add your book to a print run or KDB print run. Uh, so there's the price, paperback. There's a Kindle edition, as I say, Kindle Unlimited, zero. Um, there's also four ninety nine on Kindle for people who don't have unlimited. And there's the spiel. Unfortunately, I mean, I have to click read more to get, it's a bit annoying that I have to, um, I could potentially put one and move one of these up there so that one of these shows, shows above that read more line, which might be a good idea. Uh, I might do that. So there in bold is all the critiques. Um, and this is another important bit. Products related to this item. So your book may end up in one of these sections if you've chosen the right keywords, um, the right descriptions, um, et cetera, et cetera, the right categories. It could potentially show up as a recommendation for people who've bought a similar kind of book. And there's the product details. There's the publisher, publication date, language, number of pages, as I say, according to their reckoning. Um, ISBN, there's two versions of the ISBN. There's a long one and a short one. I think. 978 is just, I'm not sure, that's either the publish. no, it can't be the publisher number, it must be Territory, something like that, added to a British book, 978. Any librarians out there could perhaps tell me, but those two numbers will be there. The dimensions, don't really know why anyone cares, you know, well, it won't fit on my shelf, I cannot buy it. Um, bestsellers rank, here we go. Whew. My book's at 294 today. If I sell three or four copies, it will probably go into the top 100 because I've chosen running and jogging, which is quite a specialist catalog, specialized category. This is a key thing. If there's a way that your book fits into a very specialized category, you could be in the top 10 or top 20 books, but it should be honest. I mean, I've got fitness training, but I'm in, I didn't choose that, actually. I chose exercise. They've selected that for some reason, and I'm 784, which is... Probably most of them are Joe Wick or something like that. Um, so yeah, I could do better than that. I'll probably do a bit of marketing later on today and maybe try and boost that uh, further up. George Mahood. If you want an example of a successful uh, self-published author in running, George Mahood is amazing. I, I have to talk to him actually. Maybe I'll do a video for the channel because I, I have no idea how he does it. He, he's literally always in the top 10. He's got several books in the top 100 at any one time. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got to contact him actually. So that's it. And uh, I have no reviews at present. Now, this could have been a mistake. Perhaps I should have sent my book out to dozens of people months in advance, got them to promise to write a critique. It's very hard even to get friends and family to write these things, which is bizarre because all they need to write is one line, one or two lines and give you some stars. Some people are very good at that. They've managed to elicit a small army of people to say, so there you go, George Mahood. He's got 917 star ratings for that book. That's amazing. I mean, there's best-selling authors, fiction authors, who don't have 917 reviews. Um, I don't know how he's done it. So that's it, really. That's that's probably all I have to say. Um, I could do, I'll do a whole one on marketing and things, or what I know about marketing. Although you know, there are better gurus who would tell you in more detail how to go about it. I'm still researching that, so maybe I'll leave that for a month or two. But there you go, so that's how I wrote, well it's not how I wrote, but it's how I designed and created um, Run For The Hell Of It and self-published it on Amazon, and you can too. Uh, feel free to put comments, ask me questions. I will endeavor to reply to every comment I get. 
if you are not a subscriber, why not hit the button now and do so. And you can share this video with any other writer friends who might find it helpful. Um, and I will be back with a short story. Um, probably write one later on today, actually. So not today, but very soon. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.